there's a recent really exciting breakthrough of alpha two, uh, of alpha fold two solving protein folding or achieving state of the art performance on protein folding. And then I thought <laughs> proteins have a lot to do with viruses. It seems like um, being able to use machine learning to design proteins that achieve certain kinds of functions will naturally allow you to use maybe down the line, not yet, but uh, allow you to use machine learning to design basically viruses, maybe like measles, like for good, which is like to attack cancerous cells, but also for bad. Is that, <laughs> is that, uh, is that, a, is that a crazy thought? Or is this a natural place where this technology may go? I suppose as all technologies can, which is for good and for bad. Mm -hmm. Do you think about the role of machine learning in this? Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, uh -oh. AlphaFold uh, is amazing. You know, it's an amazing algorithm, uh, series of algorithms. And it does demonstrate, to me, it demonstrates just, just how powerful, you know, everything in the world has rules. We just don't know the rules. You know, we often don't know them, but you know, our brain has rules, how it works. Everything is plus and minus. There's nothing in the world that's really not at its most basic level, positive, negative. You know, it's all, uh, obviously it's all just charge. And, and that means everything, you can figure it out <laughs> with enough computational power and enough. In this case, I mean, machine learning and AI is just one way to learn rules. Uh, it's an empirical way to learn rules, and it's but it's a profoundly powerful way. Um, and certainly now, now that we are getting to a point where we can um, take a protein and know how it folds, uh, given its sequence, we can reverse engineer that, and we can say, okay, we want a protein to fold this way. What does the sequence need to be? We haven't done that yet, so much. But it's just the next iteration of all of this. And so let's say somebody wants to develop a virus. It's going to start with somebody wanting to develop a virus to, to defeat cancer, something good. you know. And so it will start with a lot of money from the federal government uh, you know, for all the positives that will come out of it. But uh, we have to be really careful uh, because uh, that will come about. There's no doubt in my mind that we will develop, uh, we're already doing it. We engineer molecules all the time for specific uses. Oftentimes we take them from nature and then tweak them. Uh, but now we can supercharge it. We can accelerate the, the pace of discovery to not have it just be discovery. We have it be true ground up engineering. And let's say you're trying to make a new molecule to stabilize somebody with um, some retinal disease, right? So we come up with some molecule that can uh, improve the stability of somebody with retinal degeneration. Uh, you know, just a small tweak to that to say, make a virus that causes the human race to become blind. You know, yeah. I mean, it sounds really conspiracy theory-ish, but, uh, but it's not, you know, it's, right. we're learning so much about biology and there's always nefarious reasons. I mean, heck, look at how AI and, you know, just Google searches those can be, um, you know, th they are every single day being leveraged by nefarious actors to take advantage of people, to steal money, to do whatever it might be, uh, eventually probably to create wars or already to create wars. And I mean, I don't think there's any question at this point behind disinformation campaigns. And so it's being leveraged, this thing that could be wholly good you know, is always going to be leveraged for bad. And so how do you balance that as a species? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> well, and the, the hope is, as you mentioned previously, that there's some, that we're able to also develop defense mechanisms. And there's something about the human species that seems to keep coming up with uh, like ways to just, just like on the deadline, <laughs> just at the last moment, figuring out how to uh, avoid destruction. I think I'm, like eternally optimistic about the human race not destroying ourselves, but you could do a lot of things that would be very painful. Yes. Well, we're doing it already, you know, just, I mean, we are seeing how our regulation today. Right. We did this thing, it started as a good thing, regulation of medical products, but now it is, uh, 
you know, unwillingly and unintentionally harming us. Our regulatory landscape, which was developed wholly for good in our country, is getting in the way of us deploying a tool that could stop uh, our economies from having to be sort of sputteringly closed, that could stop deaths from happening at the rate that they are. And it's, um, you know, uh, I think we will come to a solution. Of course, now we're going to get the vaccine and it's going to make people lose track of like why we even bother testing, which is a bad idea. But um, but we're already seeing that we have this amazing capacity to um, to both do damage when we don't intend to do damage uh, and and then also to pull up when we need to pull up and, you know, stop complete catastrophe. And so uh, it's we are an interesting species in that way, that's for sure.